The other day we did a, uh, a, video, a little video on this DW10 Caterpillar. This is a 1942 truck. Well, I, I had a couple of questions from a member called me and uh, was questioning some of what we were talking about. And he, he said, well, you know, he had seen them with air compressors well, with, that had air brakes. Well, that's true because the newer ones, and I have one sitting outside, we're going to show that, that instead of a vacuum pump here, it has an air compressor. Instead of using compressed air, this unit uses, does use vacuum. The other thing was uh, the member mentioned that uh, Caterpillar didn't get into the truck market until the 60s, and that's true. But they did try in the late 30s, and there, there was an article, and we're going to show it in the magazine for the uh, American Truck Historical Society, where they put this engine in some uh, L Model Max in around late 30s or around 1940. But I'll get the article, and we'll show that. But he, the member, he was correct. Uh, they didn't really make a go of it until the 60s, but they were, they were trying. This was their first attempt and for one reason or another it didn't work out. Okay, here we are th outside at, this is a 1946 DW10, and I'm going to show you some of the differences since we mentioned on the, the 1942 we were working on inside with the vacuum brake system. This is the air compressor on this one. This is, like I say, this one is right after World War II, so somewhere uh, in, during the war or, or maybe right after they went from vacuum to air. Uh, this is an air compressor and your typical you know, air brake system. And I also, they started using the pony motor instead of the direct electric start in that D468 engine. The other, here, Joe, come right around front. I had mentioned the other night about uh, the drive for the hydraulic pump being a dual 90 degree drive that this, this tractor could, could run either a bottom dump or a scraper. It's got the two hydraulic pumps that comes off the engine. You can't see that, but there's a drive shaft comes in off the front of the engine and then drives a hydraulic pump here and one here. And this is your typical scraper configuration opposed to the single pump for uh, just strictly a bottom dump. This truck, we just took the front end off. Uh, we're we're going to try to duplicate the DW10 signs on the side and the Caterpillar diesel uh, sign. These are in really good shape, but they were starting to rust, and we thought, well, it'd be best to get that front end, you know, take them off and paint them on both sides and duplicate them while we're at it, and then put them back on this thing. But this truck, uh, this we've had we've got it running this year, and uh, it's a pretty good running truck. We'll be running again on our show. This is the one that has the Euclid bottom dump on it. It's the only, it's the only one that I know of that from this era. Now we've got the track mounted one which is older than this, but this is this would have, would have had a, a 1ZW Euclid tractor, gas-powered tractor in front of it originally, but someone adapted it to this DW10. So it works good though. So, but if anybody's got a 1ZW Euc out there, we're looking for one. This time it's Joe behind the camera. Uh, Larry had to go do some stuff. I'm outside here, um, just going to give a little bit of a preview. Here we are. It's uh, 25 degrees here today in northeastern Ohio now that we're after the New Year's but I wanted to give a little bit of a preview of what we will uh, feature in an upcoming video at some point here when the weather permits because it is very cold outside flip the camera around here as many people know we've uh, acquired or we talked about it last year about our locomotive that we had acquired well the locomotive since last year has got an addition to it a gentleman that had lived up the road from us uh, Kenny D young was his name has always had this caboose and uh, he bought it I think in the mid 80s and always had it at his residence two miles up the road uh, this summer we 
we had bought the locomotive um, a while back. This summer we had the opportunity, uh, kind of last minute, we needed to move it out of his residence. Um, so we, we got it moved on a Friday evening, got it sitting here on the track. And then uh, sadly, within a couple of weeks of moving this caboose to its current location, um, Kenny passed away due to old age. He was a great man. So he didn't get to see it go around the track. Uh, didn't get to see it move again. But we are in process of laying or laying the groundwork for track. Um, we've got it marked out where we want track to go. So hopefully here when weather provides us the opportunity, we'll be laying down some track. Um, once again, we'll get into more detail on the locomotive and the caboose in another video. I'll let dad uh, take care of that as he usually does. We hope everybody's been enjoying the videos. Once again, we'll be putting them on Facebook and on YouTube on the Harry Young chapter page. So more information on the locomotive and the caboose and the Lakeside Railroad when we return in another video.